Hmm. I think I'm going to need to call in a, uh, quote-unquote, expert for this one. Here's another one. <laughs> It's me. Now you may have seen me hanging around various dark corners of the channel before uh, and in our live streams, but in addition to that, I'm also a professionally trained dancer. And so today I'm gonna take all that time and review a dancing game. Yeah. More specifically, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, and Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight. This is not a review of those games for the very simple fact that neither Chester or I could actually be bothered playing them. Uh, so if you want a review from a gameplay point of view, go find a video made by somebody who's actually played the game. Now these games are rhythm games, which means you kind of push buttons in time with music or something, and I, I don't know, I haven't played them, I don't know how they work. But they do have dancing in them, and so that's what I'm gonna talk about. So I'm gonna attempt to review the dancing in these games. Let's do it. Now, I have minimal experience with the Persona franchise. Uh, I've played the first Palace of Persona 5 with Chester, and I've also watched all of his live streams on Persona 4. So I'm kind of aware of the Persona franchise, but I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm aware that this video might annoy a lot of actual Persona fans. I'm very sorry. But we did think this might be a fun little video to make because I am a dancer, and so maybe I can bring a bit of a different perspective. So like I said, I've never actually played this game, uh, but I do have some videos of the dancing. I have previewed these before, uh, but we're gonna have a little watch and we're gonna have chat about it. So the first one is from the Persona 4 dancing game, and this one's called Specialist, which I think is one of the more well-known. So let's let's have a look. Yeah, this is it. This is, um... I guess this is what I'm doing with my life now. I feel like it's things like this that are why dancing is not really taken seriously. Okay, so, I mean, it's dancing, right? Uh, it's moving your body in time with music. You know, there's that. It's very basic, right? Like, the steps that he's doing are fairly easy. There's not a whole lot of technique here. We'll get to some of the other videos later on, and some of those are a little bit more complicated, but this one is... I feel like this is what people that don't know anything about dancing picture when somebody mentions dancing, which is fine. They've obviously put some effort into it. It's not just like step, clap, step, clap, but the, the steps are very basic. There's a slide, and then he does a turn, and then... Let's punch the air for a bit, and I'm gonna walk now, and there's another turn. And it is hard though, right? Like, if you're making a game about dancing, you can't include the most incredible dance steps ever, because you're, you're still creating something for a game. Because at the end of the day, this is stuff that is in the background of the actual gameplay that's going on, and so it can't be too crazy, because otherwise there would just be so much movement going on that it would draw away from the gameplay, so I do get that. But at the same time, there's something about it that's a bit... You just can't quite get away from the fact that uh, I don't like it. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just, it's not, I don't know, it's not very imaginative, I guess is what I'm looking for. And it's also just like a lot of repeated, he does that slide many times. A little groove, and then he's gonna do the slide any second, there it is, whoa! This one in particular is a lot of stepping and clicking. Click, and then I do a little groove, and there's the slide. A shot of the feet, that's good. That's kind of fun, that like, swiping movement, I like that. There's also this, where is it? I need to find it. Yeah, yeah, that. This little, ha, moment to the camera. I'll talk about this a bit later on, but having those little moments to break up the choreography is good, but also it's kind of the same position every time, it's always this. It's a good idea, but you could be a little bit more imaginative with it. Ah, uh, yes, here you go, this is classic. How do I drag out the choreography to the end of the song without having to put too much effort in? I hold. Then I click, yes. Then I hold this position. 
then we finish here again. Final verdict, Persona 4 Specialist, uh... Yeah, no, no. Now this, on the other hand... This is what I came here for. This is a masterpiece. So this video is just like a massive compilation of dances from all three games, I think. So I'm gonna have a look through and see if we can find some more interesting ones. This one's kind of more of the same, some fairly basic disco moves and a lot of clicking. Kind of the same three moves. Some basic footwork, some clicking, and a slide repeated for like three minutes. <laughs> Start. Where's the Joker one? Oh, also, side note, I, I think the music from these games is really great, uh, particularly Persona 5. I really like the Persona 5 soundtrack, and I've actually played songs from Persona 5 uh, in my dance classes when I'm teaching. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, this is the one. Uh, there's only a really small clip from it for some reason. So this is a remix of Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There. I believe the first song in the Persona 5 soundtrack um, and this is the Joker, I think. Is that the main character's name? I don't know anything about Persona. This one's actually much better, I think. Uh, it's a lot more dynamic. Like, there's a lot more movements going on. Like that. And that's a... This step. That's like a classic uh, hip-hop b-boy move. So this one's actually using a lot more dance technique. A bit more difficult stuff. And there's a lot more movement and a lot more dynamic stuff going on. Like, he's moving a lot more. It's a lot more complicated than just step clicks and slides. Yeah, and so that's like one of those moments where if you're choreographing a dance and you have a section that's really uh, full and rich with like a bunch of different movements, in order to give the audience time to rest, you have a lot of movement and then you just have a slow moment where you pause and do a little hand or a nod or a look or something to the audience and then keep dancing. Uh, and if you're in like a dance class or if you're watching a dance performance with a bunch of other dancers, they're always the moments that other dancers will cheer at because if you can do something really impressive and then finish it by just bringing the energy way back down and just having a moment of... Yeah, I just did that. And then go into the next thing. Those moments are always really powerful performances. They're just really fun to perform. Now, another thing that I noticed right after this. So it's got a lot of these traveling steps happening and a lot of coordination between the upper and the lower body. That hip hop step and then a pause. And then he goes into this. So that is like a proper technical step. We would call it a coupe jeté or a turning jeté. And it's a derivative from a ballet step, which is basically a turning jump. And what happens, I, I just found this fascinating when I was watching this. He steps back, he prepares for the jump, out, turn, and he like steps into it. But then he jumps with his legs bent. The preparation is correct. Like that's exactly how you would set up for that step. But then he jumps with his legs bent. He should have his front leg straight, like with his knee straight, and his back leg more bent than it is. But he kind of just jumps with both legs bent. So he does a setup that's correct, but then doesn't jump properly. Like, he, he goes into the turn and then just kind of <coughs> does this tiny little jump with his legs bent. I don't know. I find that really interesting, actually. I, I don't know maybe if who the person who animated it just didn't know that about dance technique, which, of course, they would be forgiven for. And so they just animated it with his legs bent without knowing, or maybe the person who choreographed it did that? I don't know. That's that's really interesting to me. All right, well, we got to watch Rivers in the Desert because that's the best song from Persona 5. Fight me. Dance battle me in real life, bro. Oh, okay. This Again, this is interesting. This is a lot faster. Ah, that was cool. I liked that. Like the gun and then... That was cool. Ooh, a little hitch kick and a slide. Oh, that was good. Again, that one was really good. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just 
the Persona 5 ones that are the, I, I don't know. That one would be a lot more challenging because it's a lot faster. And again, there's a lot more movements going on. There's a lot of coordination between the upper body and the lower body. There was a few technical steps in there. There was a couple of really nice moments like the gunshot and that hitch kick into the slide. Like that was, that was really cool. I think if that one was given to a group of dancers, um, it could actually look quite impressive. And I also think it'd be kind of challenging to replicate. So that, that was good. I liked that one. So this one, which is a remix of Rivers in the Desert, which is a song that did not need a remix. This one's a little bit more technical. Uh, where is it? There's a step in here. She does a fan kick. Yeah, there we go. That's called a fan kick. Uh, with your leg comes up and over. And that's also a fairly difficult technical skill uh, because it requires a lot of flexibility and also control uh, and just technical training to be able to do that with a straight leg and a pointed foot and all that stuff. And unlike that turning jeté before, uh, she executes it really well. Like her knee is straight, her upper body is upright. That's good, that's like good dancing. Choreography wise, this is kind of your classic commercial jazz solo. Like if you were to go to a dance competition, yes, those things do exist. If you would go to a dance competition and watch an open age or under 16 jazz solo section, this is pretty much exactly what you would see. So points for that. It's very authentic to what you would see at a real dance competition. Oh, that was interesting. That was almost like a little West Side Story jump there. Turn, step back. She didn't jump very high, but that was Broadway jazz step, that one actually. That was that was pretty good. I gotta say, like I don't I don't know how difficult it is to animate this kind of thing, but I, I feel like the animators have done a fairly good job of making it look somewhat natural. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me and I, I'm used to watching real people dance, but you know, there's there's always something a bit fake and lifeless about animated characters dancing, I I think. But I would guess they probably are using some kind of motion capture because it it seems fairly realistic, if a little, what's the word? The animation is not as sharp as I think it would be if you watched a dancer do this in real life. Whereas this is kind of, ah, yeah. They're kind of always moving a little bit and it's a bit doing the choreography correctly, but just not with 100% of the precision. It's less precise. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. The animation kind of looks like a dancer who is doing a practice before they did the proper thing. Yes! Okay, this is the one. Again, this is a really interesting uh, dancer trivia thing. So, the choreography through most of this video is fairly basic. It's a lot of arms and stuff. But then, she does this step, which is called an axle turn, which is kind of a fairly intermediate to advanced skill. I wonder if that was the choreographer just falling back into their default brain of, uh, what do I put here? I know, I'll put a technical skill in. That often happens a lot uh, for dancers when we're trying to fill time in choreography. Like, if you do a bunch of intricate stuff, but I still have four counts before the next section of the music. Uh, I know, I'll just throw a technical skill in there because that takes up time. And then she walks. Okay, this one's a bit interesting. Oh, that was good. That was a cool jump. Oh, okay. This one's actually pretty hard. Like this would be pretty difficult to, to learn and to replicate. Ah, oh, that was cool. That like slow-mo on the, on the beat drop, that was cool. This would be pretty hard to learn. And there's a lot of technical ability needed, I think, to do this properly. This is actually really interesting because in dancing we have genres, you know, like same as music, we have jazz, which is not to jazz music by the way, because you know, dances are confusing. Hip hop, contemporary, ballet, tap dancing, like we have all this stuff. And one of my favorite things to do when it comes to dancing is to kind of mix genres and take bits from different places. It's obviously very like techno kind of hip hop music. Uh, and what she's wearing is like very urban, that kind of genre. And, so, and a bunch of the steps are also very hip hop as well. But there's also a bunch of lyrical and contemporary technique in here. That is like contemporary technique. The layout is contemporary. That's a bit more jazzy. That jump is classic contemporary. So this is actually a really good example of kind of a fusion between more modern techno and hip hop styles and a more classical contemporary lyrical flowy style that's kind of based on ballet and then got changed by people who were fed up with ballet. Merging together, particularly those two genres, taking commercial hip hop dancing and more traditional contemporary dancing and fusing them is like one of my favorite things. This one is actually really fascinating that they've kind of done that. A very modern take on a 
contemporary fusion style that is actually pretty cool. That would also be very tiring as well. Like a lot of those movements were really big and energetic. I love that kind of stuff. Dancing big and full out and like doing massive jumps and stuff because it just feels so much more fun to do. I don't understand how any of these dances fit into the game. I'm terribly sorry. I'm probably offending so many people by not knowing anything, but that one was good. But again, I feel like if you had that dance being done by a real dancer, it would just have that extra layer of polish and precision on top of there that's not really present in the animation. And the thing about that that interests me is with animation, you can make these characters move in ways that the human body couldn't. So actually animating these clips gives you the ability to make it look more impressive than it would in real life because you can make the dancing super, super precise or really fast or sharp beyond what a human being could actually do. But it kind of ends up being just a bit muddy and worse. And I mean, obviously that's not the purpose of the game. Like the purpose of the dancing is to have something going on in the background while you're playing the game. Like, I totally get that, but it is kind of a missed opportunity in terms of creating quality dance content. Yeah, it's interesting that the animation kind of does the opposite to what you would expect. It's kind of like how in animated movies you see characters like jumping crazy high in the air or like running really fast in ways that is more impressive than what a human being could. This is kind of the opposite of that. Wow. So they had a bunch of steps in there from voguing, which is a whole other massive umbrella of dance and physical expression that I am not qualified to talk about. To like summarize about 30 years of history, um, basically voguing is a lot about framing the face and like expressions with the hands. It's so like this step is a classic vogue step, which is fascinating that they've put some of that in there. I mean, it's not, I'm not an expert on vogue or whacking. Like all this stuff is called whacking, which again is another whole technique. It's done imprecisely and slowly, but there you go. That's really interesting that they added that in there. That's like a very niche technique of dance. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be though. That kind of just looks like the same thing, but much worse. Okay, so this one's interesting. This um, is also really good. This is actually a really good example of like a lyrical, what's called lyrical in dance, which is where we take um, the techniques of ballet, but we make them a lot freer and a lot more flowy. This is, this is, a, this is very similar to something you would see again in like a, a lyrical section of a dance competition. It's simple, but it's elegant. So yeah, that one, that one was good. I liked that one. So like that kick is pretty hard to execute correctly. Um, and this is like a little double attitude turn that she does. But you would never do a lyrical routine in shoes like that. You would never, like she's wearing some kind of chunky school shoes. You wouldn't, you would never do that. You would just, it would be bare feet or maybe socks. A little pirouette that she fell out of, but that's okay. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. I've just noticed in editing something that I missed at the time. That right there, you see that? You see that right there? That's a broken ankle. That's not good. That would hurt a lot. If my if I did that turn and my ankle was in that position, I would be in a lot of pain and or subjected to a very severe reprimanding from my ballet teacher telling me not to do that. <laughs> Don't roll your ankles, kids. Don't do it. No wonder she fell out of the turn. There was one that I found when I was watching through these the other day in preparation for the video that I want to find. Okay, yeah, this is the last one I'm going to talk about. I don't know what this is from, but this one is really interesting because this one uses a bunch of ballet technique. I mean, that's just arm swishing, but eventually there's a step kick, then she does the turn again. Then she just goes into punching for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, here we go. Turn, step, that's called a, that's called a ton levé, if you're interested. Step kick, into the turn, yeah, nice. Step out, this thing again. Bang! Turn, over, step turn, nice. Ton levé, back, reach over, west side story into a barrel jump, land on the ground, and then a windmill. Okay, that, oh, it just keeps going. 
Never mind. No, she doesn't. Okay, that little section there is probably technically the most difficult because there's a lot of skills there of varying difficulties. But like that barrel jump, that's pretty hard. The kick obviously requires a lot of flexibility. Um, the precision of that turn is really fast, but there's also a lot of change in elevation. Like she's up and then she's jumping in the air and then she's down on the ground and then she's back up again. So couple the speed with the amount of level change that's happening and the technique, that's that little section. That's kind of, again, sort of ballet contemporary technique, which is probably the hardest section so far. The barrel jump is very... Not great though. The whole point of a barrel jump is to get your body as flat as possible so that when you're rotating, you're rotating horizontally off the ground and she kind of just does it in the air, which is fine. But to progress that skill, you want to try and get your upper body as low as possible. And a classic little Hamilton pose at the end. Oh my goodness, he has swords. Okay. I feel like I've talked for far too long about anime dancing. So I'm going to leave this video there. If there are some specific dances that I missed that you want me to look at, then let me know in the comments and maybe I can do that. Um, I guess if you want me to try and learn one of those, I could, I could attempt it. Um, I probably won't, but you know. One last thing I will point out, uh, we thought we were going to be like breaking ground with this video. Um, turns out someone's already done it. It's a channel called Crystal with a bunch of extra letters. Professional dancer makes the ultimate persona dancing tier list. Uh, she's a dancer and she has played persona games and a streamer. And so there you go. You can go check that out. She's also made a few videos where she's actually learnt and recreated some of the dances in real life, which like it's one thing for me to sit here and talk about whether I like them or not, but it's another thing to actually like, she's got the costume and everything, so that's more difficult to do than it looks. And she's even matched the camera angles. Like, that's that's a lot of work, because some of these dances are like two or three minutes long. So even though some of them are fairly simple, actually learning the whole thing, that does take a lot of effort. So there you go. If you want to see more videos about persona dancing videos by people who dance, you can go check her channel out, because I probably won't make another one of these videos. If you want to see videos of me dancing, then I guess I'll leave a link in the description to my channel, because I do that sometimes. Bye! Thanks for watching guys, hit that bell icon, subscribe, smash that subscribe button, ooh I forgot about the subscribe button, add us to your watch list. Share it with your friends, post us on your Tumblr and possibly pin interest. Yeah, get the word around for this really creative idea that I thought was very creative and then I googled it on YouTube and turns out a few other people had already done this. Disappointed.